Greetings to you all. Hello. Greetings to you. Thank you so much for being here, those of you who have joined and who will join. To those of you who view via YouTube, I have been very terrible in my not recognizing your contributions to causing these broadcasts to be known and to be aired. I'm so grateful for your kindness in letting me know whether you can see clearly and you can also hear me clearly as I speak to this recent development here in Guyana, South America. Yahweh is faithful. Irfan Ali was warned last year. I spoke prophetically about what Yahweh will use Maduro to do to him. Maduro has finally called Irfan Ali. The president of Venezuela has called Mohammed Irfan Ali the man who's paid to be president in Guyana, a puppet. <laughs> I have never, I have never heard anyone address, in reference to a, a nation's leader, address any one of Guyana's presidents as a puppet. If you know of any other, please let me know. But Maduro has called Irfan Ali a puppet. Excellent. And we'll talk. So as you join the broadcast, let me know whether you can see, you can also hear clearly. And let us have this conversation. Guyana, I've told you before, has become a cesspool worthy nation. An absolute international disgrace. The PPP has no respect for international relations. They don't care about, that's why they have certain people at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs because they do not care. Look at their attitude from the time they entered into what is called a seat of power. In August, look at what they've done with the foreign services for Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I've written before, I've written in public forums about the likes of Audrey Waddell. I guess her name doesn't lend itself to her being in that, in that environment. One of the stalwarts, Elizabeth Harper became a puppet of the PPP. From the time she, she, she was Donna Ramatar's running mate, she was never the same person. I think there's a guy named Clark, if I'm not mistaken, but there are about two, there are about three left in reference to those who came up with the likes of Rashley Jackson, um, Sir Shridat Ram, these people, these, 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 these ladies, and I think a gentleman, they are about the last hope we have. When Carl Greenwich was Minister of Foreign Affairs, Audrey Waddle, that lady about whom I speak, she was the Director General. Granger, and I spoke to this because it was in the news, when Karen Cummings, one who's a doctor who's absolutely ignorant, totally ignorant about international relations. It was obvious in the public's eye that Waddle had to go because Karen Cummings was there. I spoke to that. In finale, Jaglio, they brought her back. And then it's obvious based on that woman's track record that she couldn't stay there long either. Now you have an issue with Venezuela. This lady about whom I spoke, I think she was stationed in Venezuela when I read her biography about her life. She was stationed in Venezuela for about, what, 12 years or so? She represented us in Venezuela, lived in Venezuela. Look at the cesspool trash that we have. Where is Van West Charles? Todd? is called the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Well, we have a foreign affairs issue. And the issue we have is that Venezuela, after December, they voted. In December, they voted. And Venezuela, and Venezuela has now enacted into law, hardcore law. I told you before, for decades, they've been saying escape is theirs. They teach that in school. But now they have it written into law that Essequibo belongs to Venezuela. 
and they now have the right to act to take it. I would like to think that by now, they would be on our television screens, they would be on our smartphones, an airing of a specially convened parliamentary session in which 65 members would gather in an emergency meeting to speak to the fact that Venezuela, a Goliath of a nation compared to Guyana, has now enacted into law what did I told you? I, I told you, Irfan, that in December, I told you that Venezuela is not playing with y'all and they would make this law. I told you that. You cannot stop it. And I told you, Irfan Ali, that you are playing the fool with our lives because the PPP is known for what I call arbitrary or presidential diplomacy because you're stupid enough to think that you could make decisions for Guyanese. So, Maduro, I told you, Irfan Ali, I'm going to back to what I told you. I told you, Irfan Ali, with this argal crap, I told you that Gonzalez is a demon. Gonzalez is a, is mendacious. He's a liar. Ralph Gonzalez is an absolute waste of time. He's a, he's a train wreck. I told you, Irfanali, do not go to St. Vincent. They don't, you all in this broadcast. They did not tell you not to go to St. Vincent. They did not tell you that you're being set up by May Motley, that man, because she's more man than you. I told you, Irfan Ali, that you should not do this because, first of all, Maduro is going there to tell the people that the Venezuelans had voted in a referendum. You think that you could just go and show up on your own with Anil and Todd. Well, Todd can't say anything. But you show up there and you want to speak on my behalf and you never ask me anything. That's how disrespectful you are. You went to, 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 uh, to, to St. Vincent, not consulting with any Guyanese people. So Maduro went there to say there was a referendum held the Venezuelans have voted overwhelmingly and the Venezuelans have decided the escape is theirs and we have to take it. You show up in, in, in St. Vincent with nothing. You. Because that's the PPP's trademark. The PPP doesn't know anything about diplomacy where you use the foreign services agents to speak and then you climb the ladder. What you all do is the president shows up because you're the boss. You believe you just pop up somewhere and you just speak on everybody else's behalf. You never inquired of the Guyanese people what we think. What we're we going to do? What is our viewpoint? Where do we stand? Should you go? Should you not go? No, you decided that you're going to go. Because as I've said, Infanali, you are indeed a puppet. You're controlled by people. So you showed up. You showed up there being set up. You have no sense when it comes to international relations. I told you, Irfan Ali, that the matter is before the International Court of Justice. You actually said it before, that you have nothing to talk about because the matter is before the court. So why did you go to St. Vincent then? Because Ralph made you go. Because Maya May Motley, or whoever her name is, or his name is, got you to go there. You gone there. You went to St. Vincent to, to, to sign what is called this Argyle Agreement. And I've read that agreement for Guyanese to hear the stupidity of what you agreed to. You. You went to St. Vincent and Grenadines to sign what is called, Bratik Shalom, to sign what is called this Argyle Agreement Air Finale. And Maduro is right to call you a puppet because you're a puppet to do what you did. If you know that in the lap of the International Court of Justice lies your matter, and I told you, Irfan, I, if the matter is before the court, your response to Maduro is simple. The matter is before the court. So I have nothing to talk to you about. That's what you should have said. The matter is, being, is, in, is in court and we have nothing to speak about. You, I told you before, do not go to St. Vincent because I said what will happen is you're being set up. What you will do is you'll go there. You'll engage Maduro. You'll have conversations. You'll sign. You'll, you'll affix your signature, you'll fix a signature to a document that binds you. And I said to you that the judges at the international court, therefore, will have their hands tied by you, Irfan, because what will happen now is you can't go and complain to them since you decided to go to talk. You agreed to bypass or to hop over, sidestep, circumnavigate the international matter in the court. And you decided you're going to now talk to, 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 to Maduro, who showed up to say that he's not respecting the U.S. in any way. He's not respecting the court either. 
Maduro canceled it from the time he got to St. Vincent. He said he's not respecting anything called any court ruling or anything. Nothing. He doesn't want to hear from you about any court and any U.S. matter. So Maduro has defined your Irfan Ali as a puppet. Of whom, though? Because this all comes down to ExxonMobil. And the fact that they're gathering so much of our oil wealth. And you, instead of being a man, would have the nerve to stand to say that we should take note of what happened to Venezuela. That's what you said when they were, when they were commissioning some war for something like that. I remember what you said. That you just can't go and touch any contract. You inherited the contract. You just can't go and do that. When Rutledge sat in front, you, staring a white man in his face, afraid, were afraid to be a man. But you could point the one from, to the one from BBC and tell him, but you, you're in the pocket too wide and tell Rutledge if he's in anybody's pocket. The, the interview from BBC and her talk, you could puff up in front of his face because at the end of the day, you, you are being, you're being, you're being controlled. Your strings are being pulled. So you're being told who you could talk to and who you can't talk to. Why you can't tell Rutledge to his face? Are you in the pockets of the U.S.? Are you in the pocket of, of, of somebody else who wants to control our oil? You couldn't do that. Why you couldn't tell Richard the same way you spoke on Hard Talk, Irfan Ali? Why could you not tell the head of ExxonMobil in Guyana that, listen, you can't come and tell me I cannot monitor much oil you take it on my ground. It is my oil. Why you couldn't do that? Huh? Instead, you stood there to betray your own Guyanese people to tell us in our faces that you cannot touch the contract because what happened to Venezuela may happen to us. You're a puppet because you're being controlled by someone. That's what I mean when I speak to being a puppet. You're being controlled by certain international entities and personalities. You cannot be yourself because actually I don't credit you to having any, any, any degree of, of, of scholastic uh, aptitude, meaning you, 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 you are unlearned. You are unqualified and you are unfit to lead a nation called Guyana. You cannot even lead a pig farm. You can't even lead a polari stand. Not even an egg ball business can you run. Who in their right mind would know that there is a court matter, a matter before the international court regarding your, your, territor your territory and you who opted to St. Vincent? It is the, it's the epitome of stupidity and disrespect for people. Now that Maduro said that this is not organic law, this is law, you can do nothing. I'm happy you're here, Bremner. All y'all who come in here to throw the PPP to weak chicken cells, I'm happy y'all are here. You would go, you, head to St. Vincent. With your mask with Guyana map on it, or your wristband with Guyana map, and that's supposed to scare, scare, scare Maduro. Now Maduro has said, this is organic law. This is now tangible. This is law kagaj. This right here is written, you can do nothing about it. And I said to you, Irfan, that Maduro will be used to deal with you. Did I not tell you that? Because you're disrespectful. You don't respect, you call me, want to hint that I'm a false prophet. Well, where's the prophecy that, that's wrong? I told you that Maduro, Nicholas Maduro Ifanali, will deal with you beyond what you can even imagine. Now you and Todd and y'all, instead of there being a special emergency parliamentary meeting, a sitting in the where's the moron? Instead of calling us to the to the to, to the, the, the as a nation to hear the, the legislators of our country address this matter in the House of Assembly. You cannot be seen. Instead, 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 Ram son, that one, that one is boasting that we have a one trillion dollar budget and there'll be many more trillions of dollars to come. 
Ram son. It's speaking to development. And all that's supposed to be happening in Guyana because the PP is doing so well. When a country is saying to y'all that they're going to take two thirds of your land mass, they're going to take all of your oil, all of your gold in that area, all of your timber resources, all of your diamond, you're no longer allowed to touch it. Because you can do nothing to Venezuela if they want executable. Instead of this idiot who's responsible for culture in our country, invoking within Guyanese patriotism and an awakening of what it is to be Guyanese, that idiot is talking about this one trillion dollar budget. And we have born a boy coming. Guyanese, I want you to hear me carefully. We have a case in which a country has just passed a law, would have just written into law what is now fact in their mind that executable, our, our two thirds of our land mass belongs to them. All of our oil in the sea belongs to them in the seabed. These people are still talking about burn a boy. Come it again. Rick Ross. We're still in party mode. It doesn't, for us, it doesn't matter. Because you're not being taught by those who should be teaching. And there's not an alertness here because at the end of the day, there are no troops at the border yet in reference to the numbers they should have. So Ali believes that on, when, when troops show up, that's when we hold hand around the roundabout and say, um, you make the, the, the shape of the map of Guyana. You, 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 the school chairman must gather in the schoolyard and make the shape of map of Guyana. And you must say Guyana is ours and put, put stickers on our cars. And that would speak to us making a statement to Venezuela. And you buy two mosquito planes from India. Have you all taken note? We have a ferry from India. We have two dengue fever mosquito planes from India. Because somehow Africa can do nothing for Guyana to purchase it from. And the PP is not racist. Y'all are not racist dogs at the top there. You could buy a, a ferry from India. You could buy two dengue fever planes from India. Because Africa, where black people are, can produce nothing to buy. And that's supposed to respond to Maduro. That's supposed to keep Maduro at bay. Then there are going to be those, including Irfan, who when the pressure begins to mount, you remember they, they went Venezuela's on their heels, it was one people, one nation, one destiny. Now it's one Guyana again. One Guyana with, with, with Burna Boy, one Guyana Burna Boy concert. When 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 Maduro begins to act and you're not, if when he begins to act, it becomes one people, one nation, one destiny again. Hell no. I told you all, I will never support a finale. Not you, another one. Because you are in agreement with this Argyle foolishness. Oh yes, it's good for them to go to talk. It's good to talk. It's never good to talk if you're before the court. Oh. So y'all were in agreement that this Argyle agreement makes sense. Further, I say, that in response, instead of the parliamentarians gathering for an emergency meeting, gather them, fly them forever they are, come to Guyana, now we have to have a meeting in parliament, we have to discuss this. That didn't happen. I credit Amanza Walton Desir. She, she, she wrote you, Todd, or sought to say, Todd, we have to have a conversation. Before this law was signed, Todd, we need to meet in parliament, we have to talk about this. You think Todd cared to respond? Because he can't. You just, according to Jack, I guess policies, you just ignore everybody. Instead of that, we have Burn a Boy concert. So Guyanese, Burn a Boy is going to sing, and that's going to chase Maduro away. Burn a Boy will come here, he'll perform. Y'all black ones, especially, you go pay your money, not thinking. 
that if there's a crisis in your country, you'll need money to survive. No. You go spend your money for VIP because you, you can't afford it now. You go borrow it from somewhere or some of y'all will go stealing it. Or some you'll give some man your body for it, male and female. Because you want to say that you've been to Born and Boy concert. And when Venezuela begins to act, then what? Would Born and Boy come back and rescue y'all? Would Born and Boy come back to Ghana to rescue you? Huh? Do you even have an understanding of what a crisis is in your country? We have a crisis in leadership. That's the first crisis we have. We do not have patriotic leaders. We have leaders who don't care. There is no patriotism in Guyana here. And the best response is Todd's, Todd's writing, missive, that they have taken note of Venezuela's egregious act. Venezuela has been so wrong to, to, to enact into law that escape is theirs. So what would you do about it? I'm asking the Guyanese man, tell me what you'll do. Don't tell me you took note. I don't want to, everybody took note. What do you intend to do about it? What can you do to change the fact that Venezuela now has a law that states that Esquibo is theirs? And they now have the right to take what's theirs. You took note. Huh? You took note. And you would like all to be aware that Venezuela is in breach of international treaties. Let me, let, let, wait. Hold on a minute, please. Permit me, please, Irfan Ali, to address you as one of the most hypocritical persons who's paid to be president. You, uh, you and Jack, you have a close connection when it comes to hypocrisy. You have the gall to tell Guyanese that you are one who respects treaties. Are you out of your mind? Y'all, guardians of democracy, y'all, Apostle J, Shalom, good to see you, my brother. Y'all, during election, were asking for the U.S., Allowing Sarah Ann Lynch, Lillian Chatterjee, Gregory Quinn, and the other moron from the EU to walk into our election headquarters. That is a direct violation of the Vienna Treaty of Convention of Treaties. You, you are a hypocrite. The Vienna Treaty Convention of Treaties prohibits any diplomat for being involved in a nation's internal affairs. That is what you signed to. You call Sarah Ann Lynch that major devil. You call her a one who fights for democracy when she violated the Vienna Convention of Treaties. And now you have the nerve to say that Maduro is not respecting the, the, the treaties. Who are you, boy? Who, what, what manner of creature are you, Irfan Ali? You are not an ordinary person. And this is not a compliment to you. I have never seen a president apart from Jagu who could, who could just be as barefaced as you are. I don't know how people could stand you. The fact that you are so, so mendacious. You lie so easily that you don't even have a brain to process sometimes. That this is a fact-finding age. How could you talk about violating treaties? You said that if I don't take a vaccine, I am worse than a virus. When the when 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 at the UN it is agreed that you can never force me to take anything to my body. You and Papa Joe said that the Papa Joe Hamilton said that when the law regarding occupational health was enacted. People didn't think about COVID. So now it's okay to break the law since the law is still there. And you are talking about treaties? You! 
you a finale. Have you have one named Anil Nandalal, who's the Attorney General? You you forgot how you treat Haitians? There's a treaty in which Haitians are a part of CARICOM. And that treaty to which Ghana signed prohibits y'all from deporting Haitians from here because they're not allowed to come in. You, 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 you disgraceful dogs. You have the mind to tell people that you respect treaties? Well, where are the Haitians then? Why the Haitians can't come here freely? You talk about treaties? I credit Maduro for telling you just what he has to tell you. Because if somebody has to call you for what you are on an international scale. You want to talk to Venezuela about treaties? And respecting treaties? Well, I'm asking you, Irfan Ali, to show me where are the Haitians in my country who are a part of CARICOM with every right to travel here freely. Where are they? You show me them. You tell me why they, you, they was taught that Haitians must have visas to come here. That's what I need to know. Since you talk about treaties and you respect treaties, what about the treaty for Haitians to be here, to travel freely across the Caribbean? What about that treaty? You respect treaties? When they're about to, to vote in the referendum, you, you headed to Dubai, you and, 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 and Jack, they were climbing conference. When you know that something's about to go down in your country that was so significant, you had you gone to Dubai to talk about climate change, and you talk about treaties and respecting anything called law and, 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 and order and decency and courage? Man, get out of my face. This country has an, a, a, an issue right now where we don't have leaders who are capable of standing up to anybody called Maduro. And Maduro can see straight through y'all that you are chickens. I have said it, and I've, I'm here to repeat what I said. First of all, Maduro will deal with you, Irfan Ali, because you've seen exactly what you represent. You are controlled by people. You don't control your nation. You don't lead a nation. You're controlled by people. Secondly, he knows, certainly he does, that you have no international relations wisdom. You are as daft as they can ever be. Because Maduro could see that you would trust Ralph Gonzalez, of all people. Then Ralph stood behind this map. Remember that guy Nice? Ralph, that liar, stood behind a map and said he didn't even know what was in front of him. He stood to take a photograph of a map of Venezuela with Esequibo added to it. After this archive kind of foolishness. And then Ralph says he had no clue what was before him. He was just asked to take a, take, 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 take a photograph and he just took it. He had no clue. May I inform you that the vice president of Venezuela, that woman, she was, Ralph and the woman were, 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 were knocking glass and having a wonderful conversation the other day with Maduro and them. So Ralph is very good friends with Maduro. And you, Irfan Ali, would say that you took note of the fact that Maduro call you a puppet? What else did he call you? Who controls you? Who calls you, Irfan Ali, as a president of a country paid to be president? Who calls you, Irfan Ali, to allow when Justice Kassoon, Sandil Kassoon, rule that Guyanese, including you, should be protected by an unlimited insurance from Exxon? They have no limit to what they should spend if there's an oil spill. Who, Irfan Ali, Control you to allow Jagu to join to fight against us. You have the nerve. You 
are supposed to be paid to be president. Because you're not the president of this country for real. We know who's president. But you're paid to be the president, to sit in that office. And Jack Dio could be listed as one who has joined Exxon to fight against what Sundar Kassoon said, to protect us from oil spills, that Exxon must pay unlimited insurance for us. You love this country? You love this country? Huh? You respect treaties? You respect law? When the law of collective bargaining agreements regarding the teachers you can't even respect until today? Huh? You respect laws, eh, finale? We have signed. We have committed ourselves as a nation through our leaders, our forefathers. To being a people of class and repute. You have brought this country down to a gutter rat system. You respect treaties? You don't even respect the law of your country. You do? Well, if you did, would you show us which one of the laws allowed you all to sign for the new Demerara Harbor which should be built without there being a public procurement commission being being assembled or constituted? Where is it? Show us where there was a, a commission before that, that, that contract was signed. You respect laws? Show us the law where someone can be called a commissioner of police when they should when, when they hit retirement age already. And still acting. Show us. Show us the law that can make you tell me that I cannot get my money from my bank if I don't take a vaccine that you say I should have. Or what we call vaccine. Show us the law here finale that says that if I'm to get my passport, which is a document I have a right to as a Guyanese, according to the immigration law, show me which law states that I have to pay $25,000 for PCR tests that's ineffective, by the way, to get a $4,000 document. Show me the law that you respect. Show me the law, Irfan, that states that when there is an election issue, instead of going to the court, after Claudette Singh would have made a declaration and handed that information to the Chancellor of the Judiciary, show me the law that says you could just, in the middle of the process, say, oh, no, no, let's have a recount. And you had to recount without there being a petition filed. Show me the law. Since we're talking about laws here, show me the law, Irfan, that says that you could accept. Just takes one, and, 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 and they'll say, just take, as long as you see, just, just, just count. It is a mark, just count it. Show me the law where someone can have an entire ballot box, 40 plus of them, with absolutely no document that are called statutory. They have to be there. Show me the law, Irfan, where those documents can just disappear and you just count the ballots in those things. It, it counted. Don't worry about that. You have to count them. There's no proof of who voted. There's no proof that this is verified. There's no proof of anything. Show me the law that you respect. And then I listen to you. You talk about law and respecting treaties. Mocha Arcadia was purchased by slaves who were freedmen. And so was Diamond, if you didn't know. Ask Granger. You ask Granger to show you the commission, the report from that commission about the lands, ancestral lands. And you see that Diamond was also purchased by Africans. Show me the law that you respect. That you could have police kneeling on a woman's neck, kneeling on a woman in the mud, an African descendant. Because you all want the, want the land. And you still can't show what you did with it. And you respect treaties and laws. Show me, Irfan Ali, how the natives in Guyana could have people walking on their land, taking gold, harassing and intimidating them, and you all can't stop it. 
Do you respect law? Need I go further? Would you like to show me which law in this country, Irfan? Or when there was any treaty in reference to some order set for there to be some party? TNM? What her name is? What's, what's the girl's name? Kisun? Who? She, they haven't even had 500 votes proper. And she's the deputy speaker in the House of Assembly. Show me where that has ever happened in our country. And y'all can't address that. You talk about democracy. And she has refused a country report to leave, to vacate, to join the party. Schumann was there. She waited. Schumann left. She got there. When it's her turn to leave, she's not leaving yet. Show me if an Asha. Show me where Asha wants to will move. And you are saying to Asha, get out. Because you must respect order. And respect treaties. And respect agreements. Asha, when have we ever had a deputy speaker who has had less than two, less than 300 votes? Show me when you have ever had a party earning the seat of the deputy speaker of the House of Assembly and their party has not amassed not even a thousand votes. Show me when it happened. And some of you all will say, what has this to do with Maduro? Everything. Because Maduro has agents in Guyana. Need I speak to that as well? If, for instance, you respect immigration law or you respect treaties, show me which immigration law allows you and Jaguar to just allow Venezuelans to walk all over, jump in Guyana and just, just show up. They could just show up and you can say, they, oh, they're refugees. Running from what? I asked you that before. Which immigration law, Irfan, in this country allows anybody to just show up? There's no record of their arrival. Which port did they enter? Because they're what you call ports of entry in immigration law. Who stamped their passport? What document did they come with? Who scrutinizes people to know what is their military background? You can't tell me yet. And now, sir, if you don't know, boy, since if an, since Maduro said that Ezekiel is theirs and it's an organic law, may I inform you that in your country now, there are more Venezuelans, at least 10 to 20 or 30 times more Venezuelans than there are soldiers in this country. So you could think about Irfan Ali, if there are 10,000 Venezuelan so soldiers who came here, and now Maduro says law, we only have 3,000 plus soldiers in our army. The entire army of Guyana, all of our army, is 3,000, 4,000 maximum. That's our army. With two Mosquito planes. We have no, not one aircraft with a single gun. Don't talk about missile. Don't talk about anything to launch any rocket. We don't even have an aircraft with a gun in it. And you, Anjagdio, could talk foolishness that the people are, they fled Guyana were on, on the bottom of dictatorship. On her talk, you said that, oh, they fled Guyana again. After 28 years, they're coming back. I'm a fan. You slow, I know it is slow, but like you don't count straight. Because for 23 years, you, you boy, would have been witnessing Cherry Jagan, Janet Jagan, Sam Hines, Barra Jagdio, Donald Ramutar. You can forget. So if the people had fled Guyana because they were afraid of bottom dictatorship. And for 20 plus years, they, they fled Guyana for 28 years. I want you to tell me why they didn't come back in the last 20, in, in 23. All those who you told BBC Hard Talk interview that the people fled. And you see, Jagdio said they fled Guyana from Burnham. Well, what happened for the 23 years when you all were in power? Why didn't you come back? You people are a disgraceful pack of waste. Why are they still going to Toronto? Why are they still heading to Canada? 
Why are they going to live in Queens? If they fled on the Burnham, I would like to think they come back on the yard. So why is it for 23 years they didn't come back? And you sat. You think Maduro didn't see your interview? You don't think Maduro watches what you say and has agents in Ghana to see what you're doing? You refuse to send the Venezuelan ambassador back home when Maduro said it's Cuba's days and he come and take it. You! You got so, you're so shallow that in the midst of such an aggressive act, you have the man in the city still here. You have the ambassador still here chilling out because you can do nothing about it. And you don't think that Maduro has agents here that you all have welcomed? Because remember you said that they ran away from Burnham. But when Burnham died and Hoy took over, then Chedi won through Carter Center. I want you to tell me what happened for the 23 years, why they didn't come back? If it would have been so good under the PPP fund, why they didn't come back for 23 years? And why are they back here yet? You don't think, Irfan, Irfan, do you not think that Maduro saw your interview where you told the fellow from BBC, let me stop you there, let me stop you right there. Guyana has forest forever. Listen to how you're speaking as a president. You can't even construct a sentence properly. What do what you mean Guyana has forest forever? What does that mean? And then you said that we have forests coverage that is more than England and Scotland combined. Is that what you said? We are 213,000 square kilometers of landmass air finale. That's what we have. England and Scotland combined amongst about 210 or 208,000 square kilometers. So you mean to tell me that we just live as a people on 3,000 square kilometers? That's, that's it? That we just, that, that, that for us, we have 2,000 or 210,000 square kilometers of forest. Irfan, you are not ordinarily daft. And I'm saying that, honestly speaking, you, you are a very shallow person. And that's why I kept saying that Ali should never leave this country. You are an embarrassment to Guyana. You are a disgrace. You don't know geography of a country. You don't even understand the, the topography of your country, the topography, the shape of your land. You don't understand basic social studies. You are semi-literate. You can barely read. That's why you talk the way you talk. Imagine that you're leading a country, sitting on the BBC, where people can investigate everything you said, and you're suggesting that Guyana has 210 or so thousand square miles of forest. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Maduro could sit here and see that you, you, you are such an embarrassment, he call you a puppet because you don't, you don't speak with any degree of, of, of sense. You are embarrassing this country on a consistent basis. Jagdio, move him. Get that boy out of there, please. I, 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 I am 50 years old and there's no way that my, that as a 50 year old man, I should do this foolishness as a Guyanese. I have, I refuse to endure this as a Guyanese. Your preachers could be quiet. Your imams could be quiet and hide in some corner. I am, I refuse to go out if I were to live that long. Being quiet while I see my country being led by a semi-literate, A country Maduro.
Jagbio, you and Irfan are going to be solely responsible for what becomes of this country. Because Maduro has taken note of the fact that y'all are being controlled. Maduro would not likely come to take a Sikibo if you tell Sierra Lynch, you tell the, the new one, I don't care to know the names, get out of here. If you tell Exxon, you would you are going to fix this contract. We shall monitor every drop of oil that you take out of this ocean, the seabed. If you do that, Maduro will leave you alone. But if you think that you could play the fool, Maduro is coming for you. Let me make it clear to you all. If you have any sense and courage, you'll head to Russia and you tell Putin that you want to be a part of BRICS. Britain, we have Brazil, Russia, India. That's what we want. China, South Africa. Say, we joining y'all. Because M M Putin is not stupid, Joe. And Putin don't talk. Do you remember? When you want to play the fool, Putin sent two bombers down to Venezuela. Remember that? When you just want to play dead and good, Putin say, okay, then we'll fly two bombers down to Venezuela. Let's see what you, let's see how you want to play with us. You want to put, put military base in Guyana? No problem. Putin stands by what he said. And there is no record of Russia enslaving any African people. Never has it happened. But y'all, would prefer to be controlled by massa. And what do we have? Born a boy. Concert. That's what we have. Our military response to Venezuela is Born Boy Concert. Do you know that right here in Region 10 in Linden, Venezuelans are living on the outskirts of our town? Can the mayor, can the regional chairman and others speak to us about this, please? I start asking on the nicest of ways. I have been informed and you know that I truck I drive, so I see a whole lot. I've been informed that on the outskirts, Rockstone side going the other way, and then in the ward in the new scheme, there are Venezuelans living in our town. Who in this town would have done the necessary investigations? Commission, uh, uh, commander of the police station, you could talk to. Who in our town would have vetted these people to determine their status to determine whether they were military trained to determine what their background is and i've said to you that you need to take note of the fact that these people are coming in strategic points y'all can't see this yet huh all of our regions are being strategically inhabited by venezuelans Now there's a law. Because if you don't know, Rockstone is Esquivo. So Rockstone is Venezuela, according to Maduro's rule, to the law. So I want you all to tell me, please, if Maduro decides tonight, hey, time to act. And we send 4,000, well, you send 3,000 soldiers to the border to fight. You have 
50,000 Venezuelans in Georgetown or 20,000 Venezuelans in Georgetown. All of our ministers live in Georgetown. All of y'all like Georgetown and the co yes, yes, you have your, you have your, 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 your gated communities and all that. Right there. Maduro just acts up at the border. Y'all send the troops in there because it's all you'll do. Put them in trucks and try to drive them because you have no helicopter to fly them anywhere. You do not even have enough planes and choppers to fly 2,000 soldiers in there in one night. Y'all are a disgrace. You are an absolute waste of time. If anything were to happen at the border, you do not even have vessels, airborne, landborne, or seaborne, to take 2,000 soldiers into, the, into, in, into that region. Nothing. But you'll try to push them. And when the trucks drive into Esquibo, once you hit Venezuela's territory now, they shut y'all off and then say, okay, boys, in town, time to act. And if I know Jack Dio well, and if I know Irfan well, and Anil and those well, they'll be on that same mosquito plane flying to Trinidad or St. Vincent to hide somewhere and then on to Dubai because you have enough money to do that. Guyanese who support these people, I'm telling you all, they have enough money that they've gathered over time to secure their families, to get a private plane to dash them out of here as quickly as possible. You do not. And I can put my life on the line that Jagdio, Irfan, Anil, definitely not Priya. Phillips, you don't come because you have no authority among these people. These people will never, Ashni Singh, they would never stand to die for their country. Never. When I tell you never, never. Just take note of that. Never. And Maduro knows that. Maduro is aware that they are being controlled and also in their mind they're being protected by the US because of interest here in the oil. But Maduro also knows that China is on his side and so is Russia. Maduro knows that they still have more oil than Guyana. And Maduro also knows that the US never responds to anything called a war immediately. So they'll wait until enough of Ghana is taken, enough Ghanese are dead, and then when their interest in the sea is attacked, that's when they're going to act. We are led by chickens. And Maduro has agents as well as social media platforms to see exactly what Gayan is doing. I don't normally respond to PPP rabbits when they come on my page, but Nicholas Ramcharan, a troll, will be responded to briefly. He said, you sound like a traitor chub. You are a fear monger. Is a question you're asking you're a fear monger? No, I'm a realist. I'm an honesty monger. And that's what you can be. Traitor? Who is a traitor? The one is Jag, you're not a, tra a traitor? Come, Nicholas, you, you idiot. Come here. The one when Justice Sundil Kassoon ruled that ExxonMobil should have unlimited insurance to protect us should they be an oil spill. And Jagdio joined Exxon to fight against that. Who's the traitor? You brainless toad. Who is the traitor? When the boy from 
the Ministry of Natural Resources, miraculously erased 211 million U.S. dollars from Exxon's charge to us, from what it's supposed to pay to us. And say pay three. And Jagger said the boy is going to have two weeks without two weeks without paying. God is paid, by the way. Who is the traitor? Who is the traitor? When the EPA was in breach of what they knew to be the Andrew Shalom they heard, the rule and the law regarding or being protected and insurance being lodged before anything and EIAs and everything else, who is the traitor? When Dr. Vincent Adams was unceremoniously removed because he was standing up against Exxon and saying you're not going to flare uncontrollably in our country. And you know even what flaring is because you dance just like you fan. I don't want to explain what flaring is to you. But the others don't know. When all is coming up, there's going to be heat, there's going to be pressure, so they have to burn it off. And instead of having necessary equipment to prevent that, Exxon is flaring, as I would say, the hell out. And we talk about climate change and there's so many issues in, in the country. Okay. Have you ever heard Jack Dio say that Exxon has to stop this now? Vincent Adams, Dr. Vincent Adams was fighting against that. And he was removed. And he's now re he's been replaced by a puppet. Who is the traitor? Who is the traitor? So Maduro, and I close, has assessed the situation and he has realized that there's a puppet leading Guyana who cannot do anything to ExxonMobil. That's Maduro's issue. If you don't know Maduro's issue is, it is ExxonMobil and how Jaguar and Afrin are treating with them. That's Maduro's issue. He has no other problem. Maduro's issue is he's seen. So Exxon could access billions of barrels of oil. He's already calculated this. And the money goes to the U.S. We have 2%. 2% royalty. And how you have heard PNC people say, oh, we have to, say, we have to be grateful that we got 2 2% royalty. Because we can't, we can't, we, can't, we cannot renegotiate. And Maduro sat and watered and said, well, listen here. I will deal with you all. Because Exxon is not going to just fly away with all this money. That's Maduro's problem. If Maduro sees Jack Deal getting up tomorrow to say to Ruth Lid, listen, Doc, this thing is, has to stop. Or Aubrey Norton, y'all are not going to just extract oil and have a field anymore. Like Burnham said, 51% of what comes out of our ground is ours. Accept it or get out. If Maduro hears that, he would send troops to fight for Guyana tomorrow. To fight the U.S. for, for, for Guyana. I can promise you that. If Maduro only encounters a leader who he can see telling ExxonMobil what Bonham told the white, the white folk, out of here, we will control our economic interests. We have control over our product. And 51% is ours. 49 is yours. Do we want to do with it? But if we go, go no other way. If Maduro sees that, Maduro will fight for Guyana. Putin will fight for Guyana. Because they will know that the U.S. is now crushed again. But these chickens we have, and that's my Maduro could see and say, you're not you're a puppet. You can't do that. You're scared. I would like to inform Guyanese that before you jump and talk about SQB as we own and what's we own, understand, SQB is not our problem. I told you before, Maduro is not our problem. Jack Dio is our problem. Irfan Ali is our problem because they are the ones who have allowed this to happen for so long. When you were, when you, you should be aware that right in Trinidad and Tobago, they can renegotiate their contracts. Even our contract, what they call this big contract talk with the oil, has in it a very clear clause that the contract can be renegotiated as long as there's consultation with the parties. Now that's, that's understandable. Because if you and I have a contract and I want to change something in it, I have to talk to you. Written in our contract.
Don't let Jaguar tell you stupidness. It's in the contract. It is, I have read it. It is plainly stated that if you want to revisit anything here, if you want to do anything in this contract, there has to be an agreement made or consultation with the parties involved. Now, now hold on. How could a fund then tell you that you, you, you can't do anything to the contract? So Maduro has seen that this boy is a puppet because this, Maduro has the contract. Maduro knows exactly what the contract is. You all don't be stupid. Don't be crazy like, like, like this boy. So Maduro knows. Oh, so it is written here that you could bring X onto the table and deal with them, but you don't want to do it, so I'll deal with you. That's the bottom line. So don't let Irfan Ali borrow Jack do any one of those dunces tell you that the contract can be re renegotiated. It is written in the contract that it can be renegotiated as long as there's consultation. In other words, Guyana can't get up and say one day, listen, we want we take you 50%. And we haven't talked to Exxon. That's bad practice. But it is there. Maduro has said, you want to play the fool? Well, you're a puppet. And I can't wait to see what he'll do next. Honestly speaking, because I refuse to stand and fight for, I told you all this and I repeat it, I will never fight for Sikubo with this PPP clan, this cabal of thieves. Never will I fight for Sikubo with this group here. Because I don't feel anything coming out of Sikubo. Do you feel it? Do you have a sense of anything called wealth in your hand coming out of Sikubo? Do you understand the kind of wealth we have in our country now? For those you don't know, to bring Born a Boy to Guyana, Born a Boy concert fee in 2019 was 500,000 US dollars. In 2023 and 24, Born a Boy's concert fee is 1 million US dollars. We have a crisis. We have got a famine. We have got drought. We've got cows dying in the savannah like crazy. We've got fires all over our country. We've got food shortage coming our way. And teachers can't get enough money to pay. Nurses struggling. And we could pay Burner Boy 200 million Ghana dollars to come and sing. You all got a picture yet? Do you got the picture yet? And Ramson said it's, it's one Guyana sponsoring. What the hell is one Guyana? There's no government entity called one Guyana. There's nothing in the budget called one Guyana. So where is the money coming from to support E-Networks and those with this Burner Boy story? Burner Boy's concert fee is one million US dollars. And he doesn't get discount. Oh, you want the rest? And it's also a private jet to bring him and his crew. He doesn't fly first class. He doesn't fly business class. He doesn't fly on a, on a mosquito plane. So you can't send a mosquito, the mosquito, the dengue fever plane for born a boy. So I want you to tell me. One million US dollars plus the private jet plus the fee to have for the hangar fees. The jet has to be, has to be parked here. All must be paid. And all of that is happening when Venezuela has signed a law or enacted a law that SU Cuba is theirs. Now look at me saying, look at me saying, we're going to fight Maduro for SU Cuba. And when I go to fight Maduro for SU Cuba, Jagdeo and Ali Tom, but, but, but Shiloh, Shiloh, whatever the song name. Uh huh. Huh? I'm going to fight Fessy Kibble. And when, when you go to Stanham City fighting Ghana's view on Ali in, 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 in the VIP section, but Shiloh, I'm a great boy, Shiloh, whatever hell stupidness he sings. And y'all, right, yeah, 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 boy, boy. Me? I look like a madman to you.
you are not going to make me create some hype about SQB because I'm telling you, SQB is not Maduro's issue. If not even Maduro's issue. More so, Jack is Maduro's issue. Not SQB. So don't, don't drive me into the stupid hype of your, oh, SQB is we own and not to, not to blade of what? You talking about not to blade of grass? I need them taking these, these fellas allow so much to be extracted from our country and we can't get it up a blade of grass? When it's hot, my child and your children in public schools have zero AC units in their classroom. In the richest country in the world. Are you talking to me about not a blade of grass? Man, li listen here. Listen to me. When I am treated as if I'm Guyanese, and I have a right to the wealth of my country, I'll fight for it. Don't ask me to fight for what I don't have a sense of owning. When I am in Linden, in the hilly sand and clay belt region, and I can't have a, a, country, a, a license to mine sand, in my, the, the hills we call mountains of sand, and I can't have a license to cut it down to, 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 to sell. But you could see who owns the sand pits on the highway, and you could see who's making hundreds of millions of dollars a month on the highway, but I can't get it as a black man. I must fight for SQ, and I can't get sand in Linden? You're crazy or what? I can't have the right. My brothers can't have the right. My Indian brothers in Linden who own machines don't have the right to extract sand in the hilly sand and clay region where you have big hills. You could cut it down your could build houses if you want. Because nothing has happened to the sand where it is. It's washing into, into waterways, blocking up waterways. We could solve the problem. They would not even give my Indian brother in Linden a contract or the right to mine the sand. But I must fight for Sikibo. So who's fighting for Linden? Who's fighting for Linden? Can you all tell me that, please? When you could answer that question, talk to me about Sikibo. When you can answer that question for me, talk to me about Sikibo. Until then, anyone here is Sikibo. I want to hear nothing about Sikibo because I have a problem in Linden. I have an issue in my own hometown. In my region, I have a problem with it. Where people outside of my town can control where I take sand in here, I'm waiting for y'all, you know. I tell you, I give you people the fair chance, the, the opportunity to do the right thing by me first. I never jump at the wrong things. Nobody in this country could ever say I get mad one day and just wake up and do something. I give you the fair chance to do right by me. And once I see that you don't intend to do right by me, then I act. There's no way that I'm going to live where I live. I could look out of my house and see a huge sand hill. We call, we call mountains. It's not a mountain. But that's how much sand it is. And I can't touch it because somebody in George, someone to control what I do in London. I give y'all a long rope. And then I laughed. Because I ain't going to fight for security when I can't have access to what I have in London. Guyanese brothers and sisters, y'all do well. Don't worry about Esikubo because Esikubo is not your problem. If Finale is your problem, Norton is your problem, who agreed to this stupid argal nonsense when you when, when you're before the court already, and Jagdu is even a greater problem. Not Maduro. Why was that my I didn't my father was here? Thank you for attempting to open the eyes of the blind, especially leadership in Guyana, son. But there's none so bad as he who refuses to see. <laughs> My goodness. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, and I shall keep speaking as, I, as Yahweh gives me grace. There's no stopping me. Y'all can't do it even if you try. Ali, the record is zero against you, my... Very not, my friend. 
The record is there against you, Ali. I showed you before, months ago that Maduro will deal with you. I told you don't go anywhere to St. Vincent. You still went. I told you that Maduro is going to disrespect everything called this Argyle Agreement, and it's come to pass today. Let's see what else you would disrespect and dishonor. Y'all do well. Free free the share the broadcast, please. Bye-bye.